Hi, in this episode we take a look at the QGIS Geometry Generator. Okay, let's try and get this started. Uh, I've created a very simple QGIS project here with a uh, polygon layer and a point layer. We'll get back to the points later. I will start by using the polygon layers and the geometry generator um, to, to show you some very simple ways you can uh, modify a geometry. Uh, so the geometry generator is not actually a geometry, it's a styling. So you find that in the uh, layer styles. And um, for a polygon, you uh, instead of, for instance, a single symbol, uh, no, a simple fill, you uh, select geometry generator. And the geometry generator has a code area. And right now, the only code is the polygon geometry or a, a variable that represents the geometry. And it also has a settings for what the geometry generator should expect for uh, what type of geometry it should expect. So as long as they correspond, the actual generated geometry and the expected geometry, you will see something on the map. So if I select point, nothing, lines, nothing. But uh, the geometry generator can take this polygon geometry and generate a line geometry. So we do that by uh, segments to lines. And that's a function, so we need to add brackets like that. Then we have a line geometry based on the polygon geometry. But remember, it's only styling, so we haven't changed the actual data. It's just a style. Uh, the same way we can uh, convert a polygon to a point uh, geometry. And, and it looks like my OBS is acting up, so I hope uh, it won't disturb too much. Uh, but for a point geometry, to generate that, you can use a centroid, for instance. Like that. Then we have a centroid geometry. And I will actually add a style layer here. That is the original geometry. Very light gray. Like that so you can see what we are changing from uh, I did this so you could no can note that one of the points is actually outside uh, one of the geometries um, you may want that but if you don't there is another function you can use and it's called pole of inaccessibility pole of inaccessibility uh, that actually takes, uh, apart from the geometry, a value. And that value is, uh, well, it dictates how accurate this pole of inaccessibility is. This point is the point that is furthest away from any, from the edges of the polygon. And uh, the higher the value of this uh, value is, the less accurate it is, but it's also quicker. Uh, for this small data set, I can use a very low number. And uh, since my data is projected in meters, I can set it to one. So these points are a very accurate representation of the point in each polygon that is furthest away from any border. And if I uh, change that to uh, 100 or a, a thousand they will move uh, a lot and be more inaccurate but one is uh, pretty much the furthest away from any edge you can get in each polygon let's see my notes here uh, yeah um, 
let's go back to uh, polygon like that and there are functions that can modify the geometry in more ways and one uh, that I find really useful is smoothing so as you see my polygons here they are a bit rough and if I want to smooth them I can use the smooth function smooth and uh, the function needs the geometry and that's basically it uh, here you see a bit smoother geometry. If you want to increase the smoothness, uh, you need to add a value that tells you uh, how much smoothing is applied. So the standard is, or well, the default is one, and you don't need to uh, add a one. Two will increase the smoothness, three, and so on. And uh, depending on the application, you may need to add a lot of smoothness but three looks good for this um, another function that I quite often use is uh, buffer buffer like that and this will buffer by a number and since my data is in meters my value will and give you the buffer in meters. So 300 for instance, we look like that. But you can also uh, buffer uh, with a ne negative number, like that. Um, you can also, no, we'll skip that, we'll take that later on. Uh, so that is two very basic functions. Um, that you will learn by heart when you use the geometry generator uh, often uh, but don't panic you don't need to learn anything by heart uh, because there is a expression dialogue that you can use to uh, get help on the functions um, and one nice thing is that in the expressions I don't know if you see this, but the cursor changes to a pointer and uh, the buffer command is uh, highlighted with an underline. And that makes it uh, clickable if you press control when you click. And that brings up the help with that actual function. So that can be quite useful. Uh, if you know roughly what function it is you want to use, for instance smooth, you just search for it and then uh, you get it here. So if I want to change from buffer, buffer to smooth, just to remove buffer and double click on smooth. That was what I thought at least. Oops. Okay. Ah, it doesn't like my negative values. I hope that's the problem. nothing. Can I cancel? Yep. Let's see if we do that again. Smooth. Yep. Like that. There we go. Um, one benefit from working directly in this window is that you can see, actually see the changes. So, like that. When you do your changes, you actually see it um, directly. However, 
when it gets more and more complicated, you will need to do something else. Uh, so let's get over to the point layer. Select that. And instead of a simple marker, let's use a geometry generator for the points. And they are points like that. Uh, points and lines, they work the same way. And you can select the geometry gen generator as a style layer. Um, but the geometry generator don't only modify geometries, it can create geometries. So, for instance, we can create a line, a line string. And I think we'll do this in expression dialog. So, line, there's a command called make line, and it takes at least two points, or as many points as you want in the line. Uh, so let's make a line. Uh, the geometry is just one point. So we need another point as well. Uh, but we'll wait with that one. Because I want to show you first that this layer has some attributes in a uh, value uh, field. And I will use those. Okay. OBS, please stop acting up. I think it's my graphics drivers that is on the fritz. Never mind. So let's make line. And the first point is the actual geometry. And uh, I want to make a single line with a start and an end point. And the end point should be a point, but not a point I have, a point I want to create. So in the same way I make a line, I can make a point. Make point. Uh, let's see if we search for that. So make point takes at least x and y values. So I need to add x and y values to the make point function. Um, and I will start with the origin point, the, this geometry value. So the x from that is another function called x. Now we have the x, and then we need the y, that's y. Of the geometry. And now we see in the output preview that we have a line string geometry, but it is with a start and end point at the same location, so we won't see anything. And uh, now we get to the value. So if we clear that, and fields, here we have the value, and they are single digit integers. Uh, and depending on the scale, I can multiply this with a number. So I want to have, have it pointing up. So I will add the value to the y uh, co uh, coordinate. So plus value times 100. Let's see what that does. And let's change that simple line to an arrow so you can see it. So uh, the location is at the base of the arrow and uh, the value in the attribute table is actually the length of the arrow. A simple way to create a line as a style. 
Okay. Um, you can also create polygons from points. So, uh, let's go back to the function uh, expression dialog. My god, OBS is really acting up. Okay, make polygon. Uh, this takes an outer ring as a value, and that is basically a line. So to create a polygon, we need to first make a line. And as we did before, the line is basically uh, a number of points. So we need to make points. Oops. Make point. Uh, and these points should be based on the geometry. Uh, but I want to modify both the X and Y of the base geometry so that I, for instance, can create a square. Um, so I will have the X uh, geometry and Y geometry, like that. And I need to close the make point. Uh, however, I want to include the values. And um, I could do that directly here. Uh, but since I want to modify the value a bit, uh, so it's not just the value, it's a multiple of 100, for instance, uh, I can use another function in the expression dialog and uh, that is uh, no uh, let's see what was it uh, yes using creating a variable with variable there we go so create a function with variable and it give the variable a name just val. The value of the variable should be value from the attribute table multiplied with 100. And the final uh, value in the with variable function is the actual expression. So a comma and then we have my expression and I need to close the with variable function like that. And now we get a null uh, value because it didn't generate anything. But now I can use this val value uh, variable in my expression. So for instance, this x can be minus at val and the y can be plus at val for the first point. Can I change this so we get more real estate here? Okay, that was the first point in the make line. Uh, function, but I need three more. So I'll copy this, paste it three more times, and remove the last comma. I've done that mistake a lot of times. So now we have four identical points. The first one is uh, to the left and up. The next one should be to the 
right and up, that is plus plus, and then we should be to the right uh, and down, that is minus on the y, and then we should be at the lower left, and that is uh, left x minus and minus on the y. That should m create a line that is goes from the top left to the top right to the bottom right to the lower left and generate a square when you connect it to create a polygon. Let's hold our thumbs and look at it. Yes, it worked. Nice. So if we add the geometry that we started with, you see that it has created a polygon around it. Okay. Let's complicate things a bit. So we'll still use the point geometry because it's still a point geometry, but I want to make a create a more complex um, geometry generator. I think I will keep the with variable. And I need to make a polygon, I need to make a line, but I will not use the make point. I don't think so. No, I will do something else. I will try to use a project function. Oops, project. This uh, takes an origin point, which in the, my case here will be the actual geometry, and then it adds a distance and a bearing to it to create the new point. So the new point will be generated by this project function. So project, and I will have my starting point, that is the geometry. I will need a distance, and that will be my value. And I will need a bearing, and I'll start with one that goes straight up, zero. That is the base for my uh, new geometry generator. So add a comma, copy that, and paste it nine more times. And remove the last comma. Uh, now I want to rotate this line around the center. Uh, and since it's 10 uh, direct uh, bearings, it will be in 36 uh, degrees. But since QGIS doesn't use, you see a bearing uh, degrees, it uses radians for some of the func functions. Uh, I need to convert to radians, but if we just say radians, we can use a function for that. So zero is zero either way, but radians zero. Why didn't I do this first? I'll redo it. Copy. That's probably not 10, but never mind. So the first is 36, 72. Stop acting up, OBS, please. Hmm. Uh, we have 108. What is this? What's wrong? 144. 
180 216 and 252 288 324 and one too many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yep one too many like that this should create a polygon that is more or less a circle with uh, the radius of my value right here so let's look at that mm, yeah but I don't want a circle I want every second uh, point to be closer to the center you may see where, where I'm going here so I'll divide it by three I think And now I've created a star. Uh, if you don't want uh, as pointy stars like this, you can change to any other number, like that for instance. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to have a pointy star, uh, you could create more points to make it uh, more rounded but we have already introduced another function and that is smooth so let's smooth this and close the uh, and smoothing don't take any uh, doesn't need any other values so this will look more like less like a, a cog in a cogwheel. But if you want more smoothness, you add, let's do it there, like that. So remember, this is still just a point geometry and it's the styling that has changed. And uh, if I want to change the size of uh, one of these symbols, I can go into uh, the table. Let's pick one of the small ones. Change that to 20 and save. There we go. But I don't want a large one though. Right. 10. Okay. That was the smooth. Um, what else did I have in mind? Well, we can continue to work with this. We, we still have the original point, but that you can add other things as well. So for instance, we can copy this style layer, this geometry generator. And uh, For instance, we can buffer the second one, the one that is above, with a negative value. So that's a buffer with 200, like that. Remove the pen. Change the color. You note that when I added the uh, data defined overrides, I go into the expression string builder, but that is very similar to the, the other dialog we used for the geometry generator works more or less the same way so let's say zero zero 
and I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. Why am I doing it like this? Lighter. And that should be a color. sure you see it so let's exaggerate like that works. Um, oops. You can do a lot with the geometry generator and you can generate geometries from already generated geometries, so to say. So you can build up really complex uh, geometries with the geometry generator and you are not limited by just the original point. Um, uh, you can do a lot more. So I think that was all I wanted to show with the geometry generator. Um, can just take a look at it. Expression dialog right here. Uh, if you look under the geometry um, no, the geometry section, you have a lot of functions and uh, you can do a lot of testing, uh, iterate over it, uh, create arrays, e extremely powerful when you need to create some really advanced symbology. So this has just been a very basic introduction to the geometry generator and uh, hopefully you can get uh, at least the very simplest uh, functions uh, in your toolbox to work with when you want to create a buffer for instance or smoother geometry uh, it's just type in buffer or smooth uh, in the geometry generator and don't forget the geometry that you generate needs to match the geometry type selected. Otherwise, uh, nothing will show. Uh, so for each geometry generator that you use, that needs to match. So I think that's all for this time. And uh, I hope to see you next time.